Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. In today's video, we're gonna be testing out some super popular, super hyped up perfumes here on YouTube. I get influenced just like everyone else, but I have been trying to be better at not blind buying, so I have a gazillion samples that I've been testing lately, and I have some thoughts on some of these fragrances. So I have been trying to decide on whether or not I wanna bring these into my collection or not, so I'm just gonna let you know if I feel like these are full bottle worthy, if I'm gonna spend my money on them, I obviously can't tell you what's worth your money because I don't earn your money, but I'm gonna tell you whether or not I feel like these fragrances are worth my hard-earned money. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I really appreciate you being here. To my returning subscribers, thank you guys so much for all your continued support. I really appreciate you. And without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, so let's start off with a fragrance I was super curious about. Lots of people have been talking about it. It's by Navitus Parfums and it is Raised Spirits. This is a fragrance I've heard a lot of good things about and it sounded right up my alley. It's got pimento leaf in the opening. There's some fudge accords. There's caramel, I believe, in there. There's rum, which I love a good boozy fragrance. And it just sounded like a sweet, delicious, yummy, semi-gourmand type of perfume that I would love. Love. I love spiciness in the opening of my perfumes with a pimento leaf and then sweet gourmand notes. There's also tobacco in this fragrance, I believe, and some vanilla. All in all, it sounded absolutely delicious, and it is absolutely delicious. So when I tried it, I thought to myself, wow, this is a really great fragrance. I really like it. The only thing holding me back from getting a full bottle is that it leans very, very masculine. So I think there is oak. I think there's French oak in this fragrance and I feel like that came out so strongly on my skin and it really smelled quite masculine. I had my husband try it though and it smells fantastic on him. So it is a really great fragrance. I do give it a big thumbs up. I really like it. I think if you're a woman and you like unisex fragrances and you don't mind something that kind of leans a little bit more on the masculine side, you definitely need to check it out. It's definitely a great fragrance and I really liked it, but yeah, just not for me. A little bit too masculine for me, but um, if you're a man, definitely check it out. If you're a woman who likes that type of scent, definitely check it out. It is worth getting your nose on. All right, guys, the next one I tried is in that same category. So this is by Carolina Herrera. This is Mystery Tobacco. So I've been getting into tobacco fragrances more and more, and I thought this one sounded really interesting, and it is very good. I will say that right off the bat. I think it's excellent quality. I think it smells fantastic, but again, it leaned too masculine for me. So this is a beautiful fragrance that I tested out right before I got sick. So I just need to refresh my memory on it. I wrote some notes on it. Yeah, beautiful fragrance. It really is just very masculine for me. This has ginger and osmanthus in the opening. Definitely like a little bit of a spicy. That ginger I really pick up in the opening. There's citruses in here. There's some green notes, I believe, as well. There's tobacco and patchouli, and then there's also guyac wood and vetiver. So it does get a bit bit earthy a little bit too earthy for my taste. Tobacco fragrances for me, they need to be a bit sweeter. I think it's a good quality. I think it smells nice, especially on a man, but for me, it just, it leans so masculine. I had my husband put this on. I thought it smelled fantastic on him, but he didn't really care for this one. He, I don't think he's the biggest like earthy kind of person. So if you like tobacco, that's more on the earthy side. If you like more masculine leaning scents, it's definitely, again, worth checking out. I think it's a Nice fragrance, but not for me. Carolina Herrera Mystery Tobacco is a no for me. All right, you guys, let's talk about a fragrance that is for me, shall we? This is by The House of BDK, and this is Tobacco Rose. I don't know what it is with The House of BDK lately. It feels like they can do no wrong. I have been loving the offerings from The House of BDK lately. I have just been falling head over heels in love with this house. I don't like everything from the house, but a lot of things I've tried from the house I have really been enjoying. Now, this is a tobacco fragrance that's right up my alley. I love rose and I like the tobacco that's in here. I love patchouli and the whole mixture together just smells intoxicating. Now, if you look on Fragrantica and you look at the section that talks about what this fragrance smells like, Lancome's Oud Bouquet comes up. 
And I thought at first when I saw that, I was like, what? There's no oud in Tabac Rose. So how are people getting that? I don't understand. But the more I wore it, the more I kind of understood the comparison. I don't like oud bouquet because I don't like oud, but this feels like my oud bouquet. The rose in here is the same kind of rose, like that sweet, yummy, spicy but jammy rose that you find in Oud Bouquet. So I can kind of see the comparison. Also the tobacco and the patchouli that's in Tabac Rose makes this dark base that I can kind of see where you get, kind of see where the two might feel familiar, I guess you could say. But I don't like Oud. The Oud in Oud bouquet is just way too much for me. It's like a barnyard oud that smells like rubbing alcohol to me. And Tabac Rose has the most beautiful base with tobacco and patchouli. So top notes in Tobacco Rose, you have plum. So it's like sweet, jammy, mixed with some pink pepper, a little bit of spice. And then there's some, I think, Italian lemon. And then you have Turkish Rose, lots and lots and lots of rose. There's uh, chocolate and cinnamon. Definitely pick up a little bit of the cinnamon. I don't pick up chocolate from this though. Oh, this is so beautiful. And then in the base you have tobacco, but it's more of a sweet tobacco. It's not like a wet, dry, earthy tobacco at least to my nose. There's patchouli and then there's labdanum in here. The patchouli, the tobacco and the patchouli is very present, but again, the, the patchouli doesn't smell earthy to me. It just smells like a deep, my kind of patchouli, you know, deep, warm. I love this perfume so, so much, you guys. This is definitely a full bottle fragrance for me. So I would say if you didn't like Oud Bouquet because you don't like Oud, but you wished you liked Oud Bouquet because you like that kind of really deep jammy rose with some spiciness and you were kind of hoping for something like that but without the oud try tobacco rose it's absolutely fantastic you do have to like patchouli and you do have to like tobacco the performance on this is really good i've worn this twice now and both times i was just getting this like beautiful scent bubble around me it was just like wafting off of my skin and i was walking around just smelling myself basically let me know in the comment section what you think of tobacco rose i think it's probably one of those polarizing scents where people either love it or hate it let me know in the comment section what you think but i'm a huge fan and i will be getting a bottle of this but i'm gonna wait until fall. This is definitely a fall and winter fragrance, so I'm going to wait, maybe, if I can, <laughs> if I have self-control, which I don't usually, you know, I haven't really proven to have self-control in the past, so I'm not sure why all of a sudden I think I'm just magically going to have some, but I'm going to try to wait until fall to purchase a bottle, but this will eventually be in my collection. So that is by the House of BDK Tobacco rose. All right, up next we have one from a house that I'd never really heard about. I think this is called Epico. And this is, is it, what's the name of this? <laughs> Vani, 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 Vani Charnel, I think is, I don't know if that's right. But anyway, this fragrance has been making the rounds here on YouTube. I've been hearing lots of people talking about this and just kind of raving about it, saying it's absolutely amazing. And it sounds like it's right up my alley. So top notes, you have candied fruits, fruity notes, and lemon already. We're off to a good start because I like candied fruity type of fragrances and then we've got peach blossom white flowers in here and then there's vanilla caramel benzoin and musk i love vanilla and caramel together and i was really really excited about this fragrance however i have to say i don't know that this is full bottle worthy for me i was kind of surprised when I tested this out. It's really, it's nice. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that there's anything wrong with the fragrance because it's nice, but it's not as special as I thought it was going to be. It's very light to my nose. Does anybody else, has anybody else tried this? Like this is a very light fragrance. Of course, I only have a sample. I don't have the full bottle and I do make out those fruity notes. I make out the candied fruits for sure and they smell good, but it's just not quite what I was hoping for. They're not as prominent as I was hoping for. And then I really don't get any floral notes from here, but I do get a lot of vanilla. This is definitely a vanilla. So it smells like a light, fruity, vanilla, caramel fragrance. It's okay. <laughs> it's just okay. I don't know. I'm not really in a hurry to rush out and buy a bottle of this, to be honest with you. It's not blowing my socks off. It's not making the hills come alive with the sound of music. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Have you tried it? Let me know. I, I'm just not super impressed with the fragrance. So unfortunately for me, 
it's it's just a no. I kind of find it to be a little bit boring. It's it's kind of boring and it's kind of too light for me. So yeah. Anyway, it's a no. Okay, another vanilla. I kind of feel like I'm being a Debbie Downer right now. <laughs> I have other fragrances that I absolutely love in here, but this next one really disappointed me. This is by Javoy, and this is Fire at Will. Another okay vanilla. It's not doing it for me, guys. It's just not. I really thought I was gonna like this. I mean, and like I said, it's a vanilla. So I mean, it's not like I don't like it. You know what I mean? But I think it retails for like $200 and I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling $200 for this. You know what I mean? Again, very light. It's a light vanilla that doesn't have a whole lot of substance. I mean, it smells like vanilla. Yeah, it's just a vanilla. Another one that I'm just not super impressed with. This one has mimosa in it and brown sugar. So there's vanilla in the top and there's vanilla in the mid. There's mimosa, there's brown sugar, there's amber, musk, and vetiver in here. Fire at Will is another fragrance that I will be passing on. Okay, now why this particular vanilla that I'm gonna talk about does it for me and the other ones didn't, I, I don't think I can tell you. I don't know. I don't know why I absolutely love this particular vanilla because it is just a vanilla and caramel fragrance, but there's something about it that just made me fall in love and this is an absolute yes, but I will be waiting until fall for this one because this is more of a fall winter fragrance for sure. This one is by the house of Mazzolari and it's called Vaniglia. Wow, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. There are only three notes listed. So there's vanilla, caramel, and orchid. And I don't know if there's something about the orchid in here that just makes this perfume worth the $200, but for me, I absolutely loved it. Like this was an immediate love at first sniff. Something about this vanilla just does it for me. I don't know why the other ones don't and this one does. I couldn't tell you. This one I love. Okay, so there's something about the orchid in here. I'm not sure why or how, but I get kind of like a powdery marshmallow feel from this. Not like marshmallow, like the ooey gooey center of a marshmallow, but you know how you open up like a package of marshmallows and you get that first like powdery whiff? It's almost like that. It's like this gorgeous vanilla with gorgeous caramel swirl mixed in and then this like powdery, fl not fluffy, just a powdery burst of like a marshmallow scent. I don't know why I'm getting marshmallow from this because there's no marshmallow listed. That's what's doing it for me. That's why this vanilla is the vanilla that I'm gonna be purchasing. Oh, it smells so good. Again, I'm gonna wait until the fall because I don't see myself reaching for it in the heat. I don't really pull for like really sweet, cause this is sweet, Vaniglia is sweet. I don't pull for sweet gourmandish vanillas very often in the heat, kinda over, you know, it's kinda cloying for me. So I'll wait, I'll wait until the fall. I'll really be in the mood for that fragrance in the fall for sure and Vaniglia is a 100% yes for me. This next one is by the House of Boho Boco, and this is Wet Cherry Liquor. I have been very curious about this fragrance for a while now. I'm super glad that I finally got to test it out. It is very delicious. I really like this fragrance. I will warn you though, I was reading some reviews on Fragrantica, and there were quite a few people who found this fragrance to be medicinal. Some people were saying it smells like cherry cough syrup, and just be, just be aware of that. So I didn't actually get that with this fragrance. I don't find it to be cough syrup or medicinal, but there, are, the way that this is combined and with as much boozy notes as it has, I can kind of see where people are coming from. So just, yeah, this is a fragrance you have to test. You can't just blind buy this one. There's cherry and there's liquor in the opening and I have to say there's a lot of liquor. I don't know what kind of liquor it doesn't say, it just says liquor, but there's a lot of a, I mean, there's a lot of booziness to this fragrance for sure. And then you've got cherry, strawberry, caramel, and Turkish rose. Now, a lot of people were comparing this to Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, which is what happens with cherry fragrances. And I will say that it that's fair. You know, not all cherry fragrances smell like Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, but I get why people are comparing this one because the cherry in here really does smell the same. It smells like the same kind of cherry that's in Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. So if you like that, that sweet yet sour, gourmand, edible, yummy, delicious kind of cherry. That's what's in this fragrance and I absolutely love it. I think it smells fantastic. Plus there's a lot of booziness, which is the same as Lost Cherry. This one, Wet Cherry Liquor, 
has more booziness than Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. So just keep, it's very, very boozy. You have to be into that in order to like this fragrance. If you do not like boozy fragrances, you need to run away. <laughs> run away. I'm thinking that the added rose in here, so that Turkish rose, I'm wondering if that added rose in with all of those very sweet sticky gourmands in the mid plus the booziness in the opening, I'm wondering if that's what's like making people think cough syrup. You know, I think some people it's translating into that, but like I said, I don't get that. I don't get any kind of medicinal feel from this. Just very gorgeous, yummy cherry with a lot of booze. I do pick up that rose though. I do pick up a hint of that rose with the caramel. To me, it smells more like wine. I'm getting like this dark red wine kind of feel to the fragrance. I really like that. I think it smells really good. And then in the base, you have tonka bean, vanilla, sandalwood, and vetiver. I'm hesitant to get a full bottle of it just simply because I feel like I have so many cherry fragrances at this point, you know, with that same kind of Tom Ford's lost cherry cherry. And I'm wondering how many of those fragrances can I have? Is this going to be redundant in my collection? I don't think it's really going to matter though, to be honest with you, <laughs> because I think I am going to buy this bottle. Again, I'm going to wait. This is definitely a fall and winter fragrance for me. I could not wear this in the heat, so I'm not even going to look at it right now. I will probably purchase it in the fall. Apparently, I can have more of these types of fragrances. I can already feel myself leaning in the yes direction. I do really, really like it. So wet cherry liquor is a yes for me eventually when fall hits. All right, guys, this next fragrance I really dislike. I'm just gonna tell you that right off the bat. I'm gonna spray it even though I really don't want to, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for you guys. This is by the house of Fragrance Dubois and this is Secret Tryst. Okay, listen, when I was testing this fragrance out, I was with my husband, I was sitting on the couch, I sprayed it and immediately I disliked it, but I didn't say anything. I didn't let my facial expression show. I didn't say what I thought it smelled like because I had a very clear, vivid picture in my mind of what I thought this smelled like. I didn't say a word, I just let my husband smell it because I feel like I, kind of influence him a little bit, you know, I'll be like, oh, this smells like strawberries. And he'll be like, oh yeah, that smells like strawberries. <laughs> you know, he doesn't know. I'm pretty sure his nose is broken. But anyway, I had him smell the paper that I sprayed it on and immediately he repelled back and he said, oh, that smells like deep woods off, which is hilarious because when I first sprayed it, I didn't think it smelled like deep woods off specifically, but my thought was bug spray. No, 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 I really don't. This smells straight up like bug spray to me. Does anybody else get that from this fragrance? Has anyone else tried Secret Tryst? No, I'm not into it. Okay, top notes, you have cardamom, saffron, and bergamot, but then you have vetiver, jasmine, cedar, and rose. The woody notes in here are so overpowering. There's patchouli in here, there's labdanum, there's vanilla. The woody notes are just so overpowering, but there's something else in here that is just making me think bug spray. Definitely not my cup of tea. Now, Listen, if you love Secret Tryst, if this is like your jam, then who cares what I think, right? Don't be offended if you love this fragrance, but for me, I really don't like it, and my husband really didn't like it either. It was not his favorite thing at all. So Secret Tryst by Fragrance Dubois is definitely not happening for me. All right, you guys, up next we have by Sense of Wood Plum and Cognac. This is a fragrance that I was very curious about. I've been hearing lots and lots of people talking about this perfume. Lots and lots of people raving about it. However, when you go on Fragrantica, there are some serious mixed reviews, especially about the performance. Some people say there's like no projection and longevity. So I decided to just go ahead and get a full decant of this because I really wanted to test it out. I didn't just want a sample. I wanted to really be able to spray this on and be able to test the longevity because this is a more expensive fragrance. So I wanted to make sure that I would love this before deciding whether or not I would purchase it because I was pretty sure I was going to like it. This has notes that I love. There's plum, there's rum, there's vanilla and cinnamon right in the opening. Like Yes, those are all yes. Yes is for me. There's balsam, there's vetiver, labdanum, there's immortel and osmanthus. So I just wasn't sure. The opening sounded absolutely fantastic. And let me tell you guys something. You guys, this was love at first sniff. This was an amazing, eyes rolled in the back of my head, love at first sniff. I definitely get the cinnamon in here. 
which I love cinnamon in my fragrances. Wow, this just blows me away. So I get the cinnamon in the opening. I definitely get this very deep, dark, juicy rum, but it's not so, it's not so dark. Sometimes fruity notes that are like really dark that smell really ripe can almost smell rotten to my nose. This isn't like that at all. It's a very sweet plum, a rich decadent plum without it being too sweet and without it being too ripe, if that makes sense. And then there's rum in here for sure. This is very boozy. Again, you have to like rum. You have to like boozy notes. If you do not run away, I definitely get the vanilla for sure. And then I, I guess I can't really say the rest of the notes in here, like balsam, vetiver, labdanum, immortelle, osmanthus, you know, I'm not picking out those individual notes. And this is definitely a unisex fragrance. I think on Fragrantica, people voted that it leans a little bit more masculine, but I don't find that to be the case for me. I feel completely comfortable wearing this. When I was testing this fragrance out, I sprayed it all over and I didn't have bad performance with it. It wasn't exactly the beast that I was hoping for because when you have notes like this, this type of rich, warm, decadent, boozy type of fragrance, you think is gonna be like a beast or at least strong, you know? This is a strong kind of fragrance, but I don't find it to be a strong performing perfume. But I didn't find it to be weak either. It was moderate. I was definitely getting wafts of it. I enjoyed it so much. Every time I moved, every time I turned my head, I would get like a waff of this fragrance and I was like, wow. I mean, just wow, it's, it's gorgeous. This is definitely a fall winter fragrance. It is very much for fall winter. I'm going to try my best to wait to get a bottle. I will try to force myself to go through this decant first before I purchase a bottle, but I really want a bottle really, really bad. So uh, I'm gonna do my best to be patient and wait until fall because that's when I would wear it anyway. Oh, by the way, the juice is purple. Do you see the color of this juice? And it will stain, so beware. If you buy this fragrance and you spray it on a white shirt, it's gonna stain your shirt. So be careful of that. I do love the color of the juice, so I think it's really, really pretty. Matches my shirt. Yes, ma'am, I will eventually have this in my collection. All right, I had mentioned to you guys the house of Veronique Goodbye. They sent me a full bottle of a fragrance that I've already told you guys about. Absolutely loved it and thought it was amazing, but they also sent me samples as well of some of their other offerings, and there were two fragrances from that house that I just fell in love with and I want full bottles of 100%. The first one is Jasmine de Minoui, and and this one is freaking gorgeous. Listen, if you like jasmine, you gotta get your nose on this. You have to get your nose on this. This is probably one of the most realistic jasmine fragrances I think I've ever smelled. This doesn't smell synthetic jasmine. This smells like you are legitimately standing next to jasmine outside and you're smelling it in the air. If you are a white floral fan and you love jasmine, especially especially like a realistic jasmine, you have to get your nose on this. Don't don't just blind buy it, okay? Because these are expensive fragrances, but you need to try it. I love this. I'm a big white floral fan. This does not feel harsh to me. This does not feel, even though it smells like realistic jasmine, this is not indolic to me. Although, please keep in mind, I have a very high tolerance for white florals. So yeah, keep that in mind. Like I said, this isn't a safe blind buy. You gotta test this one out because this isn't gonna be for everyone. This is very, very obviously jasmine forward. There's C notes in here. I love it. I love sea notes. I love when a perfume makes you feel like you're standing by the water. There's vetiver and patchouli. I really don't get anything earthy though. Even though there's vetiver and patchouli in here, I'm not getting an overly earthy vibe from this fragrance. I'm mostly just getting this beautiful jasmine and I feel like I'm standing next to the ocean. Simple, but absolutely stunning. I love it. This is definitely a spring summer fragrance. So this is one that I will probably be getting soon. All right, up next, we have another fragrance by Veronique Goodbye. This one is called, I think it's Noir de Mai, is how you pronounce it, maybe. This one is an absolutely stunning rose fragrance. This is a very realistic rose fragrance. The rose in here, again, it just smells so realistic. Okay, it smells like a realistic rose, but it's like a rose that has opened up already. It's like a sun-kissed rose is what I think of. I feel like the rose is like really fully in bloom and it's been sun-kissed and you're getting the sweetness now from the rose. It's not 
necessarily a green rose, but it's not a jammy rose either. This isn't a jammy rose. It's just a sun-kissed, fully bloomed, sweeter rose. So it's got dewdrop in the opening. It's got a uh, rose and then it's got C notes. I definitely pick up those C notes. I, I feel like a ocean breeze going on. So it's just this gorgeous summery ocean breeze with this very realistic, absolutely stunning rose. And then there's woody notes in the base. Definitely pick up some woodiness. There's amber and there's oak moss. I don't get a lot of oak moss in here, which I'm thankful for because I don't usually like oak moss very well. But I definitely pick up that ambery, warm, yet woody vibe in the base for sure. So yeah, those will probably be purchases that I'll be making soon because they do remind me of spring and summer. All right, this next one is one that has been hyped to the moon and back here on YouTube. People have talked about it. You can't watch a vanilla video without hearing about this fragrance. This is by Nishane and this is Ani. And I have a decant of it. Now listen, I am very late to the game on this one. I know this one's been around for a while. People have been talking about it like this is not new, okay? So what's taken me so long to try this fragrance? Well, I'll tell you. This is a green vanilla is how people describe this. And I don't like green notes. Listen, I was traumatized. I feel like I was traumatized from Cintra, from Memo, I think it's Memo Paris. Yeah, Memo Paris. And everybody was saying that it smelled like Love Don't Be Shy, Love Don't Be Shy, Love Don't Be Shy, but it's a better performing version of Love Don't Be Shy. And I was like, oh, I definitely wanna try that. But it had pedigrain in it and it was awful. <laughs> I scrubbed that off of me. I didn't even put it on a, a tester strip first or paper, I just, when I got the sample, I just went to town on my arm and then I was like, no. I hated that sharp, harsh, pedigree green note that was running through it. I hated it so much. So now anytime that somebody says there's green in a fragrance, I'm a little gun shy. I'm a little hesitant because I really dislike that fragrance. However, I'm discovering that not all green notes are created equal. So finally, my curiosity on Ani got to me and I decided to order a decant and I could kick myself. Like I could actually punch myself in the face because I can't believe I waited this long to try this fragrance. This is absolutely phenomenal. My rule is that I have to go through the decant first before I'll order the bottle, but I broke it. Normally, I really am good at that. Normally, I do make myself go through the decant first, but I already have a bottle of Ani on its way. That's how much I loved it. That's how much I loved it as soon as I sprayed it. I wore this, I've worn this twice now, and both times I've gotten a compliment. From strangers, by the way, not from my husband, not from friends or coworkers, from complete strangers. So this is special. This is special. It is 100% worth the hype in my opinion. This is not a sharp, harsh green. Yes, there's green in the opening of this, but this is smooth. They took out all the sharp edges and they made it into this absolutely gorgeous, smooth green, but it's also citrusy. I get a lot of citruses in the opening as well. Sweet green notes, sweet citrusy. So top notes, you have ginger, bergamot, pink pepper, and green notes. I don't know what the green notes are, but they're definitely here. Then you have cardamom. Again, there's cardamom in here for sure. I can definitely pick it up. I don't always like cardamom, but this is very well done. It's not overpowering. It's just kind of there, but nice, nice and blended. This whole perfume is just so well blended. And then there's black currant, there's Turkish rose. There's also vanilla, obviously, benzoin, sandalwood and cedar, a little bit of a woodiness to this vanilla. Not your basic, boring, everyday vanilla. I've never smelled anything like this in my life. I don't have anything else that smells like Ani. Oh, and the performance is really good too. You need to try it because it's absolutely phenomenal. It is intoxicating, it is addicting, it is one of my favorites that I've smelled out of all of these that I've been testing. And like I said, of course this is full bottle <laughs> because I already ordered one and it's on the way to me right now, so. That is by Nishane Ani, yes, 100%. All right, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and stop here. I have many more that I'm testing that I want to share with you, like I said, but I'm gonna split these up into two videos, but stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell because I have fragrances that I am gonna be talking about coming up, like Vallea from Parfums de Marley, Guidance from Amouage, I have Ruby Red from The House of Oud, and those, oh, Blanche Bet. Okay, that one's been making the rounds on YouTube, okay? I hope everybody is having an amazing day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!